Hi, Tennessee and viewers and readers. This is David Plazas, the Opinion and Engagement Director. I'm excited to have as my guest, Quinn Evan Segal, who is a candidate for Metro Council at Large. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming on uh, this segment. Uh, tell the audience, please, why are you running for this office? Yeah, look, I'm from Nashville. I love Nashville. It's my home. It's all of our homes, right? It's grown a lot over my lifetime and really the past um, 10 to 15 years. And what we've seen is a government that sort of failed to step up and take care of the needs of all Nashvilleians. I think we can do better. I know we can do better. I've helped other governments do it, and I want to help my home. Tell us a little bit about those experiences about helping other governments do that and how you might apply those lessons to Nashville. Yeah, so whether it's buying a first fire truck, whether it's building a community center or fixing a sewer system or even working with a large corporation to bring hundreds and hundreds of jobs to a part of America that doesn't have it. I know what governments need to do to pay for the infrastructure they need. I also know where the mistakes are and where they can mess up. And if they spend too much money in one place, how that can sort of spiral out of control and cause issues down the road and what that means for people actually living in the city, right? It means like higher bills, it means less infrastructure and managing that sort of smart growth and that smart economic development to make sure that all citizens are taken care of. That's really what I have spent my career doing and that's what I wanna do for my hometown. One of the things you mentioned when asked about priorities, this is on the Tennessee editorial board questionnaire, you said it, at its best government is efficient, effective, and responsive to the needs of people. At its worst, it fails on these three. Right now, Nashville's failing on all of these because we have a lack of necessary systems and procedures and a series of outdated systems and procedures. When, uh, If you are elected and take office, uh, what's your thought about how to start that process, whether it's issues of infrastructure, garbage, a lot of these other things that we've dealt with in the local government the last several years? Yeah, so there are things that seem really little that actually make a huge difference, right? Those things are things like our stormwater permits department. Right now, it's severely understaffed. Um, they're all amazing, smart folks over there, but they could use some help, right? And when you can add a, one or two junior people in a budget to a department like that to help sort permits, then all of a sudden you can speed up the process of building housing pretty quickly, right? Um, it's just the way we've always done it is we've just had these folks there. Um, and we've never really thought, is this the best way to manage their time? Could more junior people do things a little faster that are routine and leave the harder stuff to the really experienced people? It also means putting in systems that we know we've needed for a really long time. So we did an amazing study um, back in 2017, Plan to Play, that talked about our park systems and how we're incredibly underparked for a city our size, right? What does that mean? It means we all have to go too far to get to a park. We have these amazing big giant parks, but we don't have parks near us that we can get to and use every day. Um, it also means our greenway network, we really need to work to connect it, right? We all love our greenways, but we all also know they stop and start in really weird places and we can't get from one to another when we need to. Um, we knew in 2017, we needed to really partner with the private sector to get the money that was necessary to build out their, that system. There is no great park system in America that wasn't in part funded by private dollars. We currently have no method to accept private dollars in our parks department. So if you want to put money into your neighborhood park, if you want to get together a group of people to say build a pollinator garden like we did in my neighborhood, you have to just keep calling and calling and calling until you find the right person in the parks department. And that person's really nice and happy to help, but suddenly you're looking at years of red tape just to get really basic improvements done that everybody wants and we agree we need. We need to sort of formalize some of those systems. But it also means things like updating our really, really out of date zoning code. That's a much bigger lift that takes years of community involvement and in going out and saying, what do you wanna see in your neighborhood? We know change is coming, but if you could dictate the change, what would that change be? What would it look like to you? How would it feel? We did that in Madison with Madison Station. Nancy Van Rees did an amazing job going out to the community and saying, what do you want to see in this place that we know will change? The community had a beautiful vision. She was able to change the zoning so that the developer could come in and build consistent with the community's vision for change. 
And that then went into effect. And now we have that development going up. The community is really excited about it. That's how we need to be governing across the city, right? It needs to be a community effort. It needs to be systematic. And it needs to be something that can grow and scale with our city. You know, one of the things I'd love to uh, talk to you a little bit about is the issues that people talk about right now is growth, you know, balancing growth. And you've alluded to it in the zoning uh, discussion. But then, then there's also the issue of affordable housing and transit. Uh, what is your approach to those topics and how have you been talking to citizens about that? Yeah, look, growth has happened. It has just happened and it has made us all pretty uncomfortable because it's happened in ways where we didn't get to have conversations about it, right? We didn't get to say, our city is growing a ton. How do we want it to grow? We just grew, 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 grew. And now we need to sort of stop for a second and say, okay, growth happens no matter what in cities. If, if cities aren't growing, they're dying. And, and we need to think about, okay, in this, you know, over 525 square miles of Davidson County, how do we want to grow? How do our neighborhoods want to grow? How do they see themselves today? What are they missing that they'd like to have? What is inconveniencing them that we can fix? right? It's that sort of front end conversation, that community building that is incredibly important. We all live here and we have a right to say, I would like to see this sort of growth, right? Like maybe we want more grocery stores in our neighborhood so we don't have to drive as far. So we're not sitting in traffic as much, right? And on the whole, I think that when we talk about growth in Nashville, what is so frustrating is that we haven't had a say in it right? We haven't gotten to say, this is how I see us growing. It's just been put on us. And that's just never a good feeling. And it's never going to make people happy. And it's always going to cause inconvenience when we don't have those really important conversations and talk it out and figure out what looks like a good plan for the city as a whole. It also means things like making sure that we have the really hard conversations about where we can have missing middle housing, lower income housing. Um, what we found in Madison Station is that the neighborhood really, really wanted that type of housing. And I think what we see in other places is when a developer says, we want to do this type of housing, people say, I don't know if that's what I want. Give me a second to figure this out. But when we bring people together on the front end, people know their neighbors need homes. They know we need affordable housing and they're willing to have it um, in sort of the method and time and place that they want. And I think it's a lot broader than we um, often think it is. And transportation similar, right? What we saw with the transit referendum is a lot of people said, this didn't have enough community input. I didn't really get a say in how this was being done. And when we look at transit going forward, it's really, really important to have those conversations and make sure that transit is being done in the way that people need and want. You know, one of the things you make me think about is is the role of the Metro Council member as kind of a check on the power of the mayor. You, know, you have 40 members there. Uh, and over the last uh, nearly decade that I've been here in Nashville, I've seen numerous projects fail, be it the transit referendum or the flood wall in downtown uh, or the the racetrack uh, uh, deal that uh, recently didn't go anywhere for the moment, uh, precisely because there wasn't that, that buy-in or community input. And how do you hope to see your relationship with the next mayor if you're elected as a council member? Yeah, I look, I hope that the next mayor and council um, have a great relationship. And I hope that that extends to my relationship with the next mayor. I think um, sort of looking at the front runners, I think they're both people who would want to probably work with council. And I think, um, you know, Freddie O'Connell being somebody who's been on council and has really good relationships with people on council will certainly help. I think overall, and part of it's probably COVID, right? People were distant for so much of this term and we forget that. Um, sometimes when we think about how the world is today versus when this term started, um, we really need council and the mayor to have a strong relationship. But we also need the at-larges to have a strong relationship countywide it's really important as an at-large that you not just have a good relationship with the mayor, but that you also be in every district in the county having those community conversations with the district person so that on these big county-wide issues, you can support their districts in the way their districts want, and you're not having to guess at what people want or tell people what they need. Yeah, and I guess the thing is, I'm looking at the uh, runoff election for the districts. You've got uh, districts 4, 11, and 29. And the commonality between the candidates, uh, they all filled out our questionnaire, was about this dissatisfaction, that they don't feel 
being well served by Nashville right now, and you alluded to it earlier in the conversation, but it, I think it's relevant to the conversation of being in every single district. Um, you know, you mentioned Madison Station Line, and that's a great example of planning and execution. Uh, what other parts of the county do you, in, in your estimation, have you seen that that is ripe for these kinds of conversations for that next stage of development? Yeah, look, I think these are conversations we have to have everywhere, right? And And the conversations we have really need to be focused on that particular neighborhood, even more micro, right, than just the district. Um, I think there are things that we can see in the urban core that maybe aren't going to be right for the suburbs and the more rural general services, but there are, those conversations have to happen all across the county, right? It's not just a this area or that area is the next big Nashville, right? We're growing everywhere. And so it's really important that no matter the speed of what of of that neighborhood's particular growth, that we're still listening to that neighborhood, right? Um, and I think that we can certainly do that and also be attuned to the character of the neighborhood, the community spirit of the neighborhood and incorporate that in any sort of change that that is happening. We're recording this on August 21st. It will be the start of the special session of the legislature. You are a co-founder of Voices for a Safer Tennessee. Could you talk a little bit about that work and also how it relates to your role if you are elected as a council member? Yeah, I mean, Voices for a Safer Tennessee um, grew actually in the room that I'm sitting in now. I'm currently in my dining room. My dining room and living room are one room we um right after Covenant, I had just a ton of friends who reached out and said, you work with government, how can we change it? And I thought, well, I work with government on infrastructure and taxes and housing and building and and, and sort of the mechanics of government. Advocacy is a little different, but I have written a bunch of laws in my life. I know how to do that. I know how government works, right? Um, come to my house and we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, and so we all came into this room um, uh, the Thursday after Covenant and um, decided that what we really needed based on who was in the room and where we all were was a true bipartisan organization that could say, look, it doesn't matter if you're left or right, if you own guns or don't own guns, if you're rural or urban, we all agree in really basic gun safety, right? That's emergency protective orders that is safe storage and that is um, closing the background check loophole, right? So those three things, it didn't matter what your background was in the room that day, that's what you thought we needed to keep um, our kids safe, to keep us safe, right? Whether we're in school or in the grocery store or you know, in downtown Nashville, having a fun night, that's what, what we all agree we need to stay safe. That work has been incredibly important. It has brought Tennesseans together from um, across the state, right? It's the the Oak Ridge to Memphis, right? It's the Chattanooga to Jackson. It's the everything in between. Um, and what we have found is that there is a real desire for people of different political backgrounds to work together in Tennessee to make Tennessee better. And when we look at council and the relationship it has with the state, I think what we see is there are real rooms for growth there, right? The cost of housing isn't a Nashville problem. It's a Middle Tennessee problem. Sitting in traffic and transit isn't a Nashville problem. It's a Middle Tennessee problem. Um, having those conversations with our neighboring counties, with other counties and cities throughout the state is incredibly important to solving our own problems because a lot of those problems require changes in state law and building bipartisan coalitions that can go to the state and say, we really care about this is gonna be really important to council going forward. With respect to the special session, you know, I would say that we do need to remember that wherever it ends up, the fact that the Republican governor of Tennessee felt compelled to call a special session to implement gun reform and um, gun safety measures is an incredible step in the history of the state and we'll keep pushing until we actually see the changes that we need. Well, thank you so much for, for that. I appreciate that. They had mentioned coalition building and your answer on the state Tennessee relations. Uh, just for uh, from a lighter note, I always ask uh, candidates a little bit about the places they'd recommend 
to uh, to people if they are visiting. And you've mentioned yeah. Percy Warner and Spring Smith uh, or Smith Springs. I'm sorry. You've mentioned ice cream, Jenny's, and Bobby's Dairy Dip, and then ending with music such as Station Inn. Tell us a little bit more about that, about your interests, and in, because it's, it's a great progression of hiking, ice cream, and then music. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm a mom of three small kids, so I'm not sort of the out at 2 a.m. phase in life right now. And I'm sure there's a lot to see in Nashville that I just wouldn't on my day recommending to my friends um, get a chance to do because we'd all be asleep. But we, you know, that's sort of our the favorite days that I had growing up in Nashville always started in a park went to food and then went to neighborhood music or some sort of backyard barbecue or something like that. And we've really tried to carry that through with our own family. And um, Smith Springs is really my favorite place to take the kids because you can skip rocks on the lake and um, see all the kind of um, amazing nature out there. And we just really love it. And then we you know, come back and we get ice cream and we cool off. And then if we're lucky enough to get a sitter, we'll go out with friends to see music. Um, that's really, I think the best of what we have in Nashville. It's our parks, right? It's our um, sort of fun community institutions like Bobby's and it's the music and the culture that we have constantly around us in a way that no other city in the country and maybe the world really has, right? It's everywhere all the time and it's great. Well, thank you so much, Quinn. If people wanted to learn more about you and your campaign, where can they go? Yeah, so you can go to www.quinn for council, Quinn with one N, councilcil.com. Um, if you misspell either of those, it'll just still reroute you um, and you'll end up there anyway. We have a bunch of information there. I'm also on Instagram and Twitter under Quinn Evan Siegel. Um, and so you can keep up with our, you know, hiking, dairy dip, um, music days on Instagram. That's where you can kind of go for more of like my family focused stuff. And Twitter is more of the political stuff, but um, you can always find more at either place. Well, thank you so much, Quinn Evan Siegel. And again, I apologize for mispronouncing your name at the beginning of this book, but I, I, I caught myself yeah. now. Thank you so much for clarifying that. Okay. Quinn with one N, uh, I wish you the best of success. Uh, any final words before we conclude? No, thank you so much for doing this. This is super fun. It's always great to, you know, do more than just write it all out and actually get to have a conversation with folks. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. And again, to the viewers, early voting starts this Friday, August 25th, it goes through September 9th, and the election is September 14th. So Nashville, let's go out and vote. Thanks.